on the edge of real and cyberspace, there is one place you can go. And let's hope it's a little bit warmer than here. Welcome to KWTV 0021, where we review the fourth generation iPod Touch. Enjoy! On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to KWTV 0021, the iPod Touch. Hey guys and girls, welcome to KWTV. Great to have you here today. Uh, first of all, if I haven't uh, had a chance to send you one of our Christmas cards, or you haven't seen the Christmas card on the nightwise.com website, Merry Christmas to everybody. Hope you are enjoying your holiday with you and your loved ones or with your geeky toys. Depends on what you like. Here in Belgium, uh, we've got a very white Christmas, 30 centimeters of snow with about 10 centimeters on the way today. And I'm gonna give you some nice uh, footage of that a little bit later on. But first, let us talk geek. It is this season to be jolly, fa la la la, because most of the time, presents will be packed underneath one of those boys. Uh, at least I hope you had some nice geeky presents. I had some nice geeky presents. I had uh, an iPod Touch, fourth generation, 32 gigabytes that I got for my Christmas and today I want to review it. So we're gonna dive in uh, deep into the world of the iPod Touch. What is it? Is it an MP3 player? Is it actually a small tablet? Is it an iPhone without a SIM card? Or is it even so much more? Well, stay tuned and find out as we take a look at the specs of this device, the pros, the cons, we do some tests with it, and we talk about all the nice ways you can let this piece of technology work for you. Getting right into business, it's time for our first clip today. We are going to give you some unboxing port of the iPod Touch 32 gigabytes as it is packed and delivered straight from Apple underneath our Christmas tree. I think it was about five years ago that I got this one. This is a first generation iPod Touch 16 gigabytes. Back in the day, it was an amazing little device because it was the first uh, MP3 player or the first iPod by Apple that only had a touchscreen interface. It had a big display and it had Wi-Fi and it had a special operating system on it and it was something pretty revolutionary. It was the next step up from the iPod video that was basically just a standard iPod with a little screen that you could watch videos on and it was the first one to feature an entire touch sensitive display. Now, this baby is about five years old and it looks actually in very good condition. It's still functioning very well. It has seen its fair share of uh, action because back in the days I was a field engineer, an IT field engineer in a big factory. That meant that I was listening to podcasts for the one hour commute to work. I would be listening to music as I was, uh, you know, going back and forth through the factory from one uh, intervention to the other. And I would be listening to podcasts on my way back home. That gave this device about eight hours of use every day. And until this day, it's still functioning fantastically. I mean, the display is good, um, the audio quality is still good, the battery is still good. It's all still functioning pretty good. Uh, it does run iOS with 3.1 point, I don't know as much. I don't know which was the latest version of the three point operating system that is on here. And uh, it's a pretty cool device. 
Display is uh, fair, fairly good. Uh, brightness is fairly good, but it doesn't come with an onboard speaker, nor does it come with an onboard microphone. I've used this one for about five years. I'm really pleased with it. I've uh, listened to thousands of hours of podcasts on it, and I am giving it away. Well, not to you guys, but uh, I'm giving it away to Niana because she is, uh, well, she always uses the hand-me-down IT that I have. She gets uh, treated very well. She gets nice toys. I get a chance to buy new toys. So I gave my iPod Touch um, to Niana because um, her 30 gigabyte uh, iPod video that we bought, I guess about six years ago, seven years ago, is it that long? Uh, is kind of, you know, the battery is kind of, uh, you know, silently dying on us. So it was time for an upgrade. Not only from the charity and because I'm a good hearted person, I gave this MP3 player to my better half, also because it gave me an excuse to buy this, the fourth generation 32 gigabyte iPod Touch. As you can see, um, there is a little difference with the old one. It's about half as thick. I call this the Cape Moss of iPods. It's disturbingly thin. Fourth generation iPod Touch 32 gigabytes. Well, I hear uh, you calling out Nightwise. Why do you need an iPod? You have a Samsung Galaxy S. It does everything and more when it comes to playing music and stuff like that. You had an iPod uh, first generation, why do you need another one? Well, well, I cannot really answer that one, but I'll try to go to the pros through the pros and the cons and the specs of this baby. So first of all, let's take a look at the exterior. It is really, really thin. I'm really talking about really thin. When you pick it up, you are kind of surprised going like, wow, this is really thin. If I put my thumb and my forefinger together here, you see there's not much space in between. Few improvements on this model as compared to the slightly thicker um, first generation model. First of all, it comes with volume buttons. Now I've missed the second and third generations of uh, iPod touches. So I had uh, didn't have any volume buttons on this one, which was kind of a drag because you had to you know unlock it and then go to the volume and uh, you know change it that way. This uh, is the return of the physical volume buttons, which is for me always a nice thing. Bottom, uh, the dock connector and the um, headphone connector, which still is on the bottom. Uh, and that always kind of surprises me because with the iPhone, it's on the top and with this baby, it's on the bottom. I never kind of knew why Apple switched those around on the iPhone versus the um, iPod touch models, but you know, so be it. Power button up top right here and uh, this is the um, underside volume buttons and on the back we also have a new addition as you can see here is a little camera hole and that camera hole is also to be found here on the front side because this baby comes with two onboard cameras that makes it kind of very very interesting device and one of the reasons that i've actually got it second reason is because it has onboard speakers as you can see the little gray bar right here and an onboard microphone this basically turns this entire device into an iphone without a sim card and that is a little bit important for later on because this is um these are some extra functionalities that can make this piece of technology really work for you um, one of the added um, uh, one of the added functionalities under the hood are also Bluetooth, which makes it fun to connect the MP3 player to my car stereo, uh, and I can play the music that's on here wirelessly without having to put in a, a mini jack uh, connector and hook it up to my car stereo that way. Um, as for software and other specs. This baby comes with an awesome display. It has the same retina display as the iPhone, which makes it very bright and extremely detailed. I'll see if I can give you this baby at an angle. And as you can see, even as an, at an angle, you can still very clearly see what's on the display. I've got some greasy fingers here, but that's okay. I put some apps on there, basically syncing up everything that was in my iTunes and uh, sending it over to uh, the iPod Touch. A very cool device, very good display, onboard microphone, onboard speakers, onboard camera, 
Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, that make this little device very, very interesting. Prices, um, $229 for the 8 gigabyte version, which I personally think is a little bit on the small side, and um, about €309 Euros for the uh, 32 gigabyte version. I do think that there's a 64 gigabyte version that's even more expensive, but I didn't go for that one. As for software, under the hood, uh, iOS 4.1.2. That means, if I can show you this, there you go, multitasking, so you can have several applications open at once, and that also give this little device uh, some nice possibilities. One of the things that really stood out for me is the camera. As you can see, there is a camera on board. I'm now using the rear camera. And it comes with an HD camera, which is amazing for a device this small. And the fact that you can really see what you're filming using the display here up top. I'm really trying to warp myself, trying to make this picture-in-picture -picture thing work. Um, there is the rear camera, which we are using right now. And there is, let me th see here, the front camera that I'm using uh, right here. The front camera is over here. And as you can see, um, it has a pretty good picture. And the rear camera is over here. What I like about the device so far is that even though the quality of the front and the rear camera are not as good as the quality on the iPhone's camera, uh, the angle of the camera is very, very good. And that makes uh, the little device ideal to do some video blogging and um, to record at arm's length. Because what's very important if you are doing video blogging and you want to use the um, front camera or the camera that's facing towards you, you really want to stretch out your arm and have yourself entirely in the picture. And I'll give you some demos of the quality of the camera, the front and the rear one, right now. Okay, we're trying out the audio here of the uh, iPod Touch webcam. This is the front facing webcam, so the one that is actually on the side of the display. I'm using it in landscape mode right now with an outstretched arm and the good thing is the angle of the camera gives you a nice shot whereas to some cameras you get something like this or a very distorted image that doesn't really feel right. The uh, angle on the camera is just perfect for just stretching out your hand and doing a video stand up just like this. I'll switch cameras for you if I can do that. What I can also do is tap to focus, so uh, we'll switch to the rear cam and I'll give you a little scenery here. So you can't actually switch cameras while you're recording video, but uh, it's an awesome, awesome little device. The only downside is the battery usage is enormous. Now this baby is still on its first charge, so uh, it won't be um, a very good, uh, well, uh, a very good comparison of how the battery is, but I haven't charged the battery until now. It's only now going uh, slightly down in, uh, in battery power because I've been using both the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth and all of the multimedia applications. What I would advise you is to uh, keep the applications locked that you don't need. Uh, meanwhle, I'm taking Enya for a walk. Enya, let's see if we can uh, make her go. Enya, up, up at that. And then now she comes. When she comes, she doesn't have to come. Let's see if we can get her to run a bit. There you go. Enya, sit down. Come here. Sit down. There you go. Good girl. Even in close-up, it's a very good image. So uh, Enya's eating snow at the moment. This is my mom's in laws uh, Border Collie. It's a very nice dog and she's pretty well trained in English, which is awesome. And she's also a little bit wacky because she loves to eat snow. Don't eat the yellow snow, okay? Enya, don't eat the yellow snow. Come here. Sit down. And yes, sit down. Good girl. Well, sit down and lie down isn't working very well, but I hope you enjoyed this uh, little test and uh, a little look at the great scenery uh, using both the front and the rear cameras on the iPod Touch.
One of the most important questions that you can ask yourself when you take a look at the fourth generation iPod Touch is, what is it? Is it an MP3 player? Well, yes. The iPod started out as an MP3 player, and this still bears the name iPod, iPod Touch, fourth generation. But, you know, is it an MP3 player? Well, yeah, in a sense it is. It does play music, and, you know, with the built-in speakers, it even plays music without a headphone, so that's good. So, you know, it kind of does what it should do. Does it play videos? Yes, it's a video player. I mean, you can just, you know, uh, go to videos and play some videos. And that won't be a problem uh, at all because the display is really good. And the onboard speakers and the headsets are good in quality. So as a media player, it's good. But 300 euros for a media player? Come on. I mean, you can get something way more cheaper. And that is where this device starts to shine. Because it's more than an MP3 player and a video player. It's much more. One of the reasons is it has Wi-Fi. Now, this thing had Wi-Fi. And basically, I almost never used the Wi-Fi. I really used this device. You know, I put content on there and I listened to content. First generation um, uh, iPod Touch came with Wi-Fi. So does this one. So why is this one so much more special? Well, that is because it comes with iOS 4.1. And that means multitasking. And this is where it starts to shine. You get your iPod uh, quality. Build quality is very good. You get a media player and an MP3 player, which is also good. And you get Wi-Fi connectivity, which is also good. But you also get iOS 4.1.2. And that means multitasking. And with multitasking, you do not only have access to all of the applications in the iTunes store, you can actually run stuff in the background. So, instead of becoming just my MP3 player that plays music while I'm, you know, uh, cleaning the house or walking around, it also becomes my Skype phone because I can have Skype running in the background. And it has an onboard speaker and an onboard microphone. So using Wi-Fi, multitasking, the onboard mic and the onboard speaker, I can turn this into my Skype phone. Hello. Now, it doesn't come with a SIM card. And that is the one reason why this device kind of differs from the iPhone. Now, a lot of you who've got an iPhone 4 will be screaming. Nightwise, there's a lot more uh, that's different about the iPhone 4 and the fourth generation iPod Touch. Well, yes, the iPhone has a SIM card. The iPhone has a slightly better camera with a higher resolution than this one. The iPhone has a slightly better front and rear facing camera. And the iPhone has a better motion detecting system. True. But the iPhone almost costs twice or three times as much as this one. And if you take a look at the math, this is a, well, SIM cardless iPhone with a slightly lower quality front and rear facing camera it costs about 300 euros. If I were to buy an iPhone uh, of the same specs, uh, well, there isn't a 32 gigabyte iPhone, but just, you know, work with me here. That would be 630 euros. There is 300 euros difference. There's a difference of 300 euros, 321 to be sure. Well, for that money, I can either, you know, buy a phone, a smartphone even, or I can really buy a small SLR camera and have amazing quality. So that kind of makes this device, for its price, very, very interesting. Now, these onboard cameras also come, you know, uh, also give it the ability to use it as an HD video recorder. Okay, it's not awesome quality, but, you know, for 300 euros, you get quite a bit of quality. I have done comparisons between this baby's video recording and audio recording possibilities and the one from the Samsung Galaxy S and the HTC Wildfire. And this baby, as you can see in the clips that we showed you, really beats the living crap out of those devices. It is, for 300 euros, um, an amazingly great device. So, so far we've got um, an MP3 player, check. We've got a video player, check. We've got a wireless Skype phone, check. We've got a gaming system, because, you know, you can play all of the... Um, games on here, like, for example, the one that we love so much. Um, 
that I can't find at the moment. Where is it? You know, no. Oh, trust me on this one. Angry Birds. It has access to Apple's uh, Game Center, which I haven't used yet. But you know, it's kind of a, an, an entertainment system. Um, and it gives you the ability to film and make pictures with it and stuff like that. The only thing that you cannot do is, you know, use it as a phone. And that's about where the whole comparison kind of stops. Because this thing is closer to an iPad than it is to an iPhone. Because all of the things that you can do on an iPad are possible on one of these devices. All of the apps run on iOS 4.1.2. So um, the one thing that I've really enjoyed is having applications on my iPad be available on my iPod Touch. And these devices kind of becoming the same um, interaction devices with my applications and informations and services, but just on a different size. The iPad is, you know, I have it on my arm and I, you know, when I really want to read and do stuff. But when I'm around the house and I just have something in my pocket or I just want to listen to music, I also have this device to interact with the same services. Twitter, it's on here. Facebook, it's on here. TweetDeck, it's on here. Um, stuff like that. My email, uh, my contacts, the interaction with the Google Cloud, it's all on here. So for 300 euros, it is quite the little device. Rounding up, we're going to take a look at the pros and the cons of this device. And we are going to um, take a look at the way the iPod Touch really works for me. The final question is, of course, how does the iPod Touch work for me? Well, on several levels. First of all, as a media player. Um, I sync all of my podcasts to this baby. I've got a lot of music on it. That's why I went for the 32 gigabytes, uh, because to me, it's a sweet spot. 64 is a little bit too big for music only. Video, I do watch some video on it, but when I really want to sit down and relax, I either use my iPad or I watch, uh, you know, the videos on my TV through my boxy box. So, you know, video storage, not really that important on this one. 32 gigabytes is for me a little sweet spot. Like it as a media player, because the Bluetooth uh, interacts with my car stereo, I could just, you know, have the iPod touch in the car and it automatically um, sends the audio through my car stereo and I don't have to hook up any cables. Really pleased with that one. Um, it also works for me as a content creation device. And that is new. This is the first generation was for me purely a content consumption device, watching video casts, listening to podcasts. This also allows me to create some content because of the great camera, both front and rear, and the great audio quality that comes with the device. Very nice piece of kit. Um, I wouldn't say that I would write a book on this one, um, but you know, I have Evernote available if I want to take some quick notes and I don't have my iPad with me. This is something that I can really quickly uh, get out of my pocket and just start typing away on whatever that I want to do. The great thing is the multitasking uh, makes that very easy to do. So also really nice as a content creation device. The iPad to me, iPad, iPod, sorry. The iPod to me is also a communication device. I've got my Twitter client on here, got my Facebook client on here, and I've got Skype on here. Uh, during times where I am under Wi-Fi coverage, that is a very nice way to communicate with people. I mean, um, Skype works really well. Uh, I can check my Facebook stats and update. I can do my Twitter feeds. I've got my email tied into here. It has my calendar, stuff like that. It's a real uh, nice way to communicate. And because of the multitasking, it's not or this application or or that application. The 4.1.2 version that is on here allows multiple programs to run at the same time. So you got your Twitter client in the background. You've got your Skype client in the background and you can listen to music or do other things on this in the same time at the same time. And that turns this little device into a wireless Skype phone, which is really nice. Uh, I've, you also get the application FaceTime to, um, you know, make video calls with other iPhone users or um, other Mac users. And I've even tried that. It works really, really well. It uh, lets you use both the front and the rear camera, and it really adapts the way it works in portrait mode or in landscape mode. I actually uh, had a little Christmas uh, 
well, uh, FaceTime call with the people from Podfeet, Allison and Steve uh, from the Nocilla Cast podcast. And uh, that was really nice to show them around the house and, um, you know, film and see them. It's really futuristic that way. So a really good communication device. Um, a mini iPad. Well, yeah, it is kind of like a mini iPad because you've got the same applications on this device than I've got on my iPad. It was so funny that um, when I synced it up to my um, MacBook, to my, sorry, to my iMac behind me, it installed all the applications that were installed for my iPad on my iPod Touch and it kind of, you know, put it in the right version. So I've got like the BBC player that I have on my iPod. Uh, I also have on my iPad um, the um, books that I can read on my iPad. I can also read them on my iPod. Well, if you take the whole cloud syncing into account, this kind of becomes the mini iPad. Now, if you're looking for uh, working with the whole iOS ecosphere and having a, a gateway drug into the whole, whole uh, into the whole um, iTunes Store and App Store of Apple, this is a great device to get started at, you know, as low as 239 euros, which is pretty cheap, and you do get very good value for money. Um, in combination with my Samsung Galaxy S, it's also a great device. My Samsung Galaxy S, which runs Android, has the ability to act as a Wi-Fi hotspot. So using the Wi-Fi hotspot on my phone that uses the Edge or 3G connection to which it's connected, I can also use the iPad, uh, the iPod Touch. Sorry, <laughs> mess, mess up all the lines. Um, but that's one of the things that you have to think about. It's not or, or. It's not or you buy an Android phone or you buy an iPhone or you buy a Windows machine or you buy a Mac. You can do both at the same time and you have to think about creative ways of combining technology and for that, it's a great way. I mean, I've got an Android phone with all the goodies and if I wanna, you know, still hook up my uh, iPod Touch and my iOS ecosphere to the internets, well, I can just that, do that via my iPhone, uh, via my Android phone and the hotspot functionality or I can just use it with Wi-Fi wherever I am or at home. So for 300 euros, very good thing, but there are some pros and some uh, cons that I do want to talk about. I will round up with those. Well, with the pros and the cons, I always like to start with the cons. The headset that you get with this device is absolutely abysmal. It is not good. I have uh, had quite the disappointment when I bought the iPod Touch because, you know, the whole thing of buying an iPod used to be such a big thing. I mean, when I bought my first iPod, uh, it was in a big box and it was like you unwrapped it and it was this really nice packaging with a power brick with it and some cables and a little booklet and you really thought you just, you know, bought something really special. When I bought the 30 gigabyte video, it was a smaller box. When I bought the first generation iPod Touch, it was even a smaller box without a power uh, brick with it. And this one is just even worse. It's a little plastic box and it just comes with a sync cable and uh, earphones and a little booklet. So the whole Apple experience isn't really there when it comes to unboxing as I showed you in the unboxing porn video. But, you know, it, it's about the device, that's true. But, you know, it's not that same Apple fee feeling that the fanboys like to talk about than I've had with other devices. So, uh, that's one of the downsides. Um, the Bluetooth connection, I'm st I still need to upgrade to the latest version of iOS 4.1.2 or something. Uh, so, I need to mention this. Um, I do have an issue with the Bluetooth connection. When I start playing music... On my car stereo, it plays fine. When the screen fades to black and the, you know, it doesn't really go asleep, but the, the, the screen kind of blanks out to save power, I start having hitches and hiccups in the audio stream that is transmitted via Bluetooth. So I'm going to upgrade it to the latest version and I'll get back to you uh, if that solves that problem. But I was very um, surprised to see that that happened. We tried it with several tracks. Um, 
and we tried turning the device off and on and repairing, but we still had the problem. So I need to find out what's bothering uh, me there. And you know, one of the bigger downsides that I always say is that you need iTunes to sync up everything to this device. So that's not really uh, a plus side, even though it has Wi-Fi and stuff like that, you still need to connect the little cable and that is always, you know, kind of a bummer. But the good thing is you can jailbreak this baby and try other ways. It is very small, which <clears throat> makes it feel like a delicate device. So one of the things that I do recommend is protection. Um, for the screen, um, it is a little bit, you know, sensitive to greasy fingers as most uh, touch-enabled devices are. But to protect the screen, I would uh, recommend a Zag Invisible Shield, which is a little um, kind of plastic thing, pla plastic film that you um, stick onto the screen of the iPod. I've got it on this one. I have it on my iPad. I use Zag screens on every device that I buy. I would highly recommend it. They uh, protect it from scratches, keep it nice and clean, and they help it not to get all greasy and stuff. So that is something that I would really recommend. And as for a pouch, well, I got this baby uh, from Niana yesterday. Um, it's a Mac Alley iPod fourth generation uh, case that kind of snaps around. I'll show you here. Kind of snaps around the iPod. Let me just. It's really tight, so it is well protected, and it kind of protects the angles here, as you can see. This corner is really delicate, and because it's so thin, I wasn't really, you know, comfortable with that. And the case that I've now put around it does give it that, you know, protective bezel. It is slightly thicker, so if I put the iPad, uh, uh, the iPad down, it doesn't really put the screen on the surface where I'm putting it on. It kind of uh, raises that uh, that surface a little bit, protects it there. Um, there are uh, holes for the camera and there are special, you know, indentations to uh, play with the buttons like the power button here and the volume buttons here. And it leaves uh, plenty of space to uh, even connect the uh, whole situation, the whole player, the whole iPod into a dock without being obstructed by the case because it leaves the bottom open completely. What I also like about this one, it has a little kickstand which allows me to place the um, mp3 player place the ipod on a flat surface like that so as you can see a little kickstand and that is really nice if you want to do uh, facetime conversations or just watch videos so you don't always have to keep the player in your hands as for the pros well supreme apple quality build as always you you know, unpack it, keep it in your hand, hold it in your hands and you go like, yeah, this is decent stuff. I'm going to have this for years. And, you know, if I don't lose it or drop it or God knows what. Um, the screen is awesome. Compared to this baby, this fourth generation has a fantastically bright screen and it really helps when you are typing away on it or reading websites. The resolution of the screen is so much better. Um, the... HD camera on it, the camera and the microphone. I love them both. It is a really cheap way of having an HD camera. And the form factor is really convenient as well. You can just, you know, whip it out and start filming away. The angle on the camera is really good if you want to do video blogging and you're just, you know, a one man band like I am. So all in all, I am very pleased with the device. I would say that I would like, I would have liked to have a better audio quality coming from the speakers, a little bit more volume, but for the rest, this is a really, really cool device. Time to round up and, uh, well, we'll just do that now. Okay, that's about all we have time for on this episode of KWTV0021, the iPod Touch 4th Generation 32 Gigabytes Review. I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. As always, you know where to go. www.nightwise.com. That's K-N-I-G-H-T-W-I-S-E.com for our website. If you found us via YouTube and you're watching the YouTube version of this video, go check out the website because there are plenty of more videos there that were too long and uh, too full of 
are great quality to fit on YouTube, so uh, go over to the website. If you're on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash nightwise. If you want to follow us, if you are uh, near a computer right now, why don't you tweet that you're listening to the episode and mention the URL of the website so your Twitter followers can, you know, get to know the nightwise.com website as well. One more special coming up at the end of the year. We got a special treat for you on um, December 29th and 30th. We are hosting KWTV Live 2010. Two live shows, each of four hours straight uh, from 8 a.m. to 12 a.m. GMT Plus One will be aired on the 29th and the 30th of uh, December. So if you're listening to this in time, get your butts over to www.nightwise.com slash nightlive. That is K-N-I-G-H-T-W-I-S-E dot com slash K-N-I-G-H-T-L-I-V-E to uh, catch us live. We'll be playing music, having guests, uh, playing YouTube videos. We've got live DJ sets. And of course, we've got plenty of um, enthusiasts of uh, the Nightcast and tonightwise.com website in our chat room. So come and hang out for the two uh, almost last days of the year for a nice and geeky year end. This will be the final episode of KWTV for 2010. We'll see you on the flip side in 2011. And I hope that you have a great, uh, great holidays. I will wish you all the best for you and yours in the new year. Until then, I'm out the door. I think I'm going to pack my iPod Touch and some headphones to listen to some music as I'm doing that. And I'll see you guys on the flip side in the next year uh, if we can. So until then, uh, stay subscribed, subscribe to the feed if you haven't done so. Uh, go over to nightwise.com and check out the media feed to get all of this in your MP3 player. And uh, you know, let technology work for you instead of the other way around. Have a great holidays and we'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah.